On this episode of Ghost Hunters International, GHI searches Barry's homeland of Northern Ireland for the source of a startling apparition, a nurse with no feet. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I swear to God, I just saw someone small just running past. At Roe Valley Hospital, Scott is touched by an icy hand. It felt like someone brushed their hand against my back. Wow. Then, the team crosses the Irish Sea to investigate a notorious island prison. I thought I felt something touch my wrist. Will Barry and Chris hear the deadly wail of the Banshee? I heard something. It sounded raspy. And is this the evidence GHI needs to prove a haunting at Spike Island? It's amazing. great to be back of course back in my little humble part of the world and uh, of course growing up in this area I was very aware of this case but uh, just never was able to visit Susie's gonna give us the download and let us know what to expect okay guys we're heading over to Lima Valley to investigate Roe Valley Hospital now Roe Valley Hospital wasn't always a hospital originally it was established as a union workhouse between 1842 and 1932 Victims of the famine were forced to work here in terrible conditions. These people were treated like slaves pretty much at this union workhouse, and about 10 people died every week. Wow. Now our client is Damien Kaur. He's a manager of the facility and quite the skeptic, might I add. He's been hearing all sorts of claims. There have been reports that people have seen apparitions throughout the hospital, as well as people capturing these apparitions in photographs. One of the employees was pushed by an unseen force, and people were claiming to hear footsteps late at night throughout the hospital as well. Okay, folks, uh, looks like the uh, the building's coming up in front of us. It kind of looks like a gingerbread house. It does, it does look like a gingerbread it? house. Well, you're all very welcome to Roe Valley Hospital. Thank you. There's an awful lot of history here. The building started off in 1842 as a workhouse. The workhouses in Ireland were horrible, nasty places, and they were designed as such, if you can imagine. It was a place of last resort. You and your family would be at death's door. It was a, a horrible, nasty time, which came to an end in 1936, when the building was transformed then into the district hospital right. uh, by this lady here, Dr. Robinson. She brought a bit of love and care into the system for years after her death. When someone died, Many nurses reported what they said was the ghost of Dr. Robinson. She was there to take the souls away to a better place. I've heard that story told many times. So speaking of paranormal stories, we're led to believe that the building has some activity attributed to it. And we'd love to see these areas and possibly you could recount some of the activity that has been given to you. Okay. If you follow me Great. through these doors here. I've called GHI today because the stories float around. A skeptic like me can just dismiss them. I don't think it's right to dismiss them. If people have been telling these stories over the years, it'd be good to get some closure on them to prove them or disprove them. So this is our kitchen, where uh, some of the stories originate. When the hospital was operating 24-7, there were people sleeping here. There were nurses on duty all night. There was a regular demand for tea. I went to make the tea and walked into the kitchen and there was a person there and I nearly walked into them and I said, oh sorry, she wasn't see-through, she was solid. The dress came in at the waist and she had a bonnet on and I thought that is her, was her. I'm almost sure that the person I saw was Dr. Robertson. So here we are in what you can see is a very well-preserved workhouse dormitory where the, where the females would have slept. 250 to 300 women in here and next door. Over the years, people have reported saying the ghost of the nurse with no feet. 
I could never understand this. I mean, ghost with no fate. Normally, a ghost of no head, but yeah. a ghost with no fate. But, but it was a story that's been regularly told by generations of people who work in this place. And if you see the windows behind us here, there was a chap there taking a photograph of those because he found it interesting. And when he took the photograph through the lens, he saw a man staring back at him. He, he's convinced to this day that he saw some ghostly apparition. We've now, we've come from one end of the complex right to the other end. Right. Just three or four weeks ago, and a chap came forward. He was walking down this, which is called the Blackburn Pad, and he saw what he described as a red apparition, which looks like a female form floating in the air. And the guy had actually got it on photograph on his digital camera. And hopefully, we now have evidence that that exists, because we do have the photograph. There have been a lot of claims, of course, which range from sounds to, to, to actual apparitions themselves, both being witnessed and being photographed. As we set up for our investigation, we're not quite sure what is going to come through, but we're really going to give it our best intentions. Scott. Tilt it up. Up, down. Perfect. Stop. That's good, guys. OK, Paul, do you want to tell us where you strategically place these cameras? <laughs> What we have here, first of all, is the full spectrum camera uh, looking up the top of the stairwell out by the security reception area. Yes. And then going upstairs, we have a camera that's actually looking at the entire hallway. Okay. Um, then what we have is the kitchen area, mm -hmm. uh, where we've had these claims of this lady in black and white. Okay. Um, then what we have is the dorms. Okay. And lastly, what we have is the maternity ward, where there are claims of uh, these shadow figures, mm -hmm. um, as well as the fact they hear this baby crying constantly. Great. You guys are talking about the, the woman's dormitory. Maybe Susan and I could do session up there. It'd be a good idea and see what comes off it. Okay, great. Let's get those lights out and start investigating. Yeah. Well, let's get around this building and get to the, the bridge where this yeah. red apparition is seen. Very yeah. curious about that. Paul and I came out to the front of Roe Valley Hospital to debunk this, uh, this, this photograph of the orange figure. This is what we're looking at. Um, you've got your I've cell got phone. mine with me, yeah. Um, I've got a red flashlight. OK. So let's see if we can reproduce something similar to this. Yeah. It was taken on a cell phone. So Paul and I tried to, to take our equipment and reproduce the same photograph. OK, I'm going to start walking. Now what I'm seeing is a dot. That's, that's nothing. OK, right, then we'll switch to the other cameras. OK. Now, we weren't able to duplicate the photograph with our cell phone, um, so then we switched to the full spectrum camera and my digital SLR. Ready? OK. Go. How does that look? Same as before with the, uh, the little red dot. Let's try it with mine. I'll give you the red okay. flashlight yeah. this time. Turn. And walk toward the camera. We were flashing the light at the camera. We were walking with the camera, swinging the light back and forth. OK. We're getting close. We're getting very close. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What the hell is that? I swear to God, I just saw someone small just running past. What? Someone small just ran. It, I saw it hit here, this, this part of the car, and it looked like someone just went like that. And there's no one here. What was that? What was that? Is that someone just ran? You heard that clearly. Oh, uh, yeah. Did you actually hear me say what was that? Um, I said um, that a second before yeah. you said it. Uh -huh. Clear as day. It was pretty close. There was someone just walking there. What the hell's going on out here? What was that? Is that someone just ran? Barry and I heard what sounded like several footsteps running away. And so, obviously, we started looking around, seeing if there was somebody about, because it did sound like somebody was running away. Is anyone there? You're not seeing anyone, Paul. I don't see anything, man. There's a shadow over there. Someone walking. Where the hell did he go? 
don't know. What? Where's the other... Where did that guy go that was over in the fence? I don't know. I just... I was watching him, and then something here caught my eye. And, and now... Now I don't see either. That was crazy. There is some weird stuff going on. It sounded like whatever it was was running through this. Yeah, I was actually, as soon as I walked over here, that was it. Yeah. That was it. It wasn't as harsh as gravel. We sounded just like this. Yeah. That's what I was hearing as well. So we see shadows over here. We come over here, and then we hear footsteps running away. Yeah. I'm going to turn this camera around. OK, that's clear. dormitory it's, it's kind of crazy i mean so they they go around they take homeless people they'd round them all up and they basically force them to live in these places susan and i headed up to the women's dormitory this is an area where people claim to see this footless apparition all right so i brought the laser grid and a recorder what did you bring a uh, emf detector and a dv Look at the girls doing all the tech, huh? I know, right? Chris thought it would be a great idea if uh, the two girls of the team would head over to the women's dormitory to see if we could possibly relate with the spirits that would occupy the place to try to put ourselves in these women's shoes to see if that would spark up any response at all from the spirits. If there's anybody in here, please don't be afraid of us. We're not here to hurt you. We're not here to make you work. You've done nothing wrong. We're just here to talk. We heard some of the stories about how the women were separated from their children. Do you have any kids? If you cannot speak with us, we urge you, we invite you to communicate with us any way you know how. Wait, did you hear that? Yeah, I heard that. It was in the back corner? Yeah. It sounded like two knocks. It was like perfect, like uh, even louder than that. Joe for Chris or Susan? Chris or Joe? Hey, Chris. Um, Sky and I are at Command Central. We just happen to be looking at the monitor. The way the camera's pointed, it looks like there's something moving on the left side of a wall. Do you know what that is? There's nothing over there. Hmm. Yeah, when I'm looking at the screen, there was something on the wall to the left. It's opposite of the doorway. OK, so we will set this up over here facing that end. So we decided to set up the thermal camera on the opposite side of the room, covering the side of the room where the movement was seen, hoping that, you know, whatever came out for us then, if it was something, might come out for us again. Did you also want to move the audio recorder back over there? Yeah, that couldn't hurt. Christopher, Joe, and Scott. OK, go for Joe. Uh, we're just calling you guys to let you know that we're going to leave this room still for a little bit. We're leaving the thermal camera set up with everything else going and just let the room sit for a little bit. Sounds great. Copy that. Okay. So this is the kitchen where the, this apparition of the lady is seen. Now, the claim coming from the kitchen area is while the nurses come down here at night to make a cup of tea, uh, they see this, this apparition, uh, this, this uh, female wearing a black and white and a bonnet. So, uh, a little party. We decided we were going to try and uh, entice this spirit to come forward by placing the kettle on the stove. I wonder who this person that appears, Dr. Robertson. Dr. Robertson, are you the female that is said to appear here? As other nurses come and make some tea late at night. You were quite the driving force to turn this into a hospital. Are you proud of what it has become? Are you able to tell me what year it is? Are you able to tell us your name? Someone just try to hold my hand. Okay. Right here, right. I felt, okay. I felt the pressure in. If if you're trying to get my attention, you've got it. 
Can you can you do it again, please? Is there a reason why you just touch me? Is it just to say that you're here? I mean, you've got our attention. Make a nice little noise. During the EVP session, Paul felt like he was touched in the side of the hand. And moments before that, I'd heard the rustling coming from my left hand side. Is it connected? We're not quite sure. Are there any replies in the EVP device? We're not quite sure. We'll have to wait to analysis. This is going to creep me out. Just a bit. Yeah, the sounds of kids and stuff is creepy. Well, Joe and I were investigating the maternity ward, and we were following up on claims of babies crying, as well as seeing some shadows show up in the area. Hello? We're speaking to anybody in this room that would like to come forward? Are there any nurses in here who are taking care of the babies? We thank you for doing that. It must be very sad for working with the dying children. What's the matter? It's weird. It almost felt like someone came up and just like brushed their hand against my back. Wow. Hello? We're speaking to anybody in this room. Are there any nurses in here who are taking care of the babies? Um, Scott and I were investigating the uh, maternity ward here at Rogue Valley Hospital. We sat down at the table and uh, we wanted to conduct an EVP session. What's the matter? It's weird. It almost felt like someone came up and just like brushed their hand against my back. Wow. I freaked out in here, just I'm a little uncomfortable. It has, it has a, a, a feel to the room. Uh, I felt fingers down my back. It was a del deliberate force. I definitely felt that something was trying to make contact. Are you trying to talk and communicate with us by touching Scott and could you touch me? That to me sounded like a whine. Uh, that's what I was going to say. That sounded like a baby. Uh, 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 uh. That's pretty loud. Hello? Is that you here with us? Are you trying to get our attention? You hear it over there now? Who's that? That sounded like the same thing we heard. That sounded like either a baby laughing like cooing. Oh, cooing. Cooing. This is not a big room. If you're trying to get our attention, please come closer. Give us something else. Make a sound. Maybe let us see your shadow. We were hearing snippets of sound, like a baby cooing, and then the baby was crying. Uh, we didn't see anything that would cause that sound. I thought it might have been the radiator, but the radiator was off. Uh, we looked outside the window, um, so what that sound was, uh, we're really not sure. Okay, folks, I think we've had a really good thorough investigation here. Um, let's get our equipment packed up, get ready to go. I'm really looking forward to seeing what comes out of the women's dormitory. I'm most curious about whatever it was Joe and Scott saw on the DVR. What was in that room that we didn't see? Or is it something that we're going to be able to figure out? So I think that's the big question of the night for me. I thought it was a good idea that Chris and I could bring the rest of the team and let them hear and see what, uh, what the sounds and sights of the Irish pipe truly are. Fantastic. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. I'm sure, Richard, if you don't mind, some of us would actually like to get a go at this. Oh, <laughs> this is the most awkward thing. <laughs> yeah, you guys laugh now, OK? Yeah, I, I think I broke it. <laughs> Let's see how the Englishman does. Mm -hmm. 
I think you need to get up there next. Play it like my grandmother used to play it. Did she used to play? No. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I felt as if I was wrestling a tiger, trying to keep the air in the pipes. If you can cover the top, one at the back, three at the front, huh? you'll be streets ahead of your competitors. Why are you giving the British guy all the info? He needs all the help he can get. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so much better than I did. I like the eyebrow. <laughs> all right. And the six. <laughs> yeah, jealous of my trophy, you are. Chris Williams has not tried yet. Yeah, I know. I was doing that on purpose. I'd have to say that I gave the best performance because I didn't make anybody's ears in that bar bleed. Well, that was fun, actually. Uh, let's get back to the hotel now and start analysis. So we're just about to go into analysis from the Roe Valley uh, Hospital. Um, we really cover this place from top to bottom and we experienced some really interesting stuff. Um, and I'm hoping that that's gonna reflect in the data that we collected. Maybe we have some sort of answers for Damien. Hey Paul. Yes. When Susan and Chris were up in the, the women's dorms, uh, Joe and I would just happen to pass in front of Command Central. Mm -hmm. We noticed on the, the DVR what appeared to be a figure. In the, the, the window. I clearly saw that with my own eyes. I, mean, I could have swore that something was there. I, I kept trying to focus my eyes. And... You know what? I was just looking at that, and look what we got. That looks oh, like wow. a face. Wow. Definitely a face. Damien, it, it is really good to see you again. You too. Hi. It is a real pleasure to be able to investigate back in Northern Ireland, uh, to be back home. Good to see you haven't lost the Northern Ireland accent either. I'm really trying to hold on to it. <laughs> yeah. During the, uh, the investigation, a lot of the teams were having unusual experiences. Paul and I, for instance, were investigating outside. Paul and I witnessed this unusual figure that seemed to move from left to right. And, and it, it disappeared behind a tree. We were expecting this person to walk out the other side. They didn't. They simply vanished. Now, we did have cameras pointing in that direction, but unfortunately, we weren't able to capture anything. So that remains as a personal experience. Well, that's fair enough. At least just had a personal experience. We did. But moving on from that, Joe and Scott were also having unusual experiences in the maternity ward during their investigation. They said that they had a couple things happen. One, um, Scott felt what he thought were fingers on his back. That's how he described it. Joe and Scott also had seen some sort of figure, some sort of shadow figure in there um, that they weren't able to figure out. And then separately, Paul said he felt his hand get touched in the kitchen. It wasn't directly in front of our DVR system, but nothing showed up in that particular camera. Looking at the photographs that you, that you had given us, one of them in particular depicted a red figure taken at, at the other side of the railway bridge. Paul and I were working diligently outside trying to recreate this. But the closest we could get to was, was this. And that, by no means, we felt was even close to the photograph that you had showed us. So that remains a mystery to us. You know, there's a lot of um, things you gave us that revolved around photos, and one of the stories, too, was this man who was up in the woman's dormitory who took the picture and seen a face in the window. Susan and I were investigating in the woman's dorm. This is the back window in the woman's dormitory. We're assuming that if they're investigating inside the building, chances are the lights are out. They'd be using probably a digital camera and a flash. With it being dark outside, using the flash inside, you're going to end up with a reflection on the glass like this. Well, that's what I asked the first time I heard that story. Are you sure it wasn't a reflection of yourself? Yeah. So as chances are they probably caught the reflection of somebody else in the room, or the man may have caught himself. But uh, we have to say, uh, Damien, that, that we really did thoroughly investigate uh, Roe Valley Hospital. And uh, over all the areas, both the front and back of the building, inside and out. We did have a few personal experiences here, but without any evidence, it's not enough to call it haunted. That's great. That's what I needed to hear. That vindicates what I've always thought. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm sure it will make a lot of the people who work in this and live in this complex every day, it'll make them sleep a wee bit sounder at night. So great. thanks very much. Great. And to the whole team as well. Great. Thank you. 
now that we've got the GHA findings, I'd, I'd have to say I'm perfectly happy with them. You know, when you have people working in here, 365 days a year, I think it's good to lay these ghosts to rest, if you like, and I think that's what we've done. Thanks to GHA, I have a rational explanation for that. Well, I think coming out of this investigation, Damien was very happy with what we had to show up. Yeah, he seemed kind of relieved. He seemed like he looked forward to telling everybody they had nothing to worry about. Mm -hmm. And of course now, he understands that the hospital isn't what the, the stories were making out to be. Folks, welcome to Spike Island, Ireland. We're on our way to meet an old acquaintance of mine, Michael Martin. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to Spike Island. Thanks, Michael. How are you? You're very welcome. I've asked GHI to come and investigate whether or not there's actual supernatural activity going on because it'll throw some light or clarity on the many, many stories I've heard from people who lived on the island and served on the island. So, Michael, why don't you tell us a little bit about the island, some of the history? All of the different layers of Irish history are here, some of them wonderful. Uh, but in the monastic period, we had a monastery here. During the Viking period, they attacked us. During our War of Independence, there was people held here. And there was a huge fortress built at the height of the French Revolution. This fortress was converted for use as a prison. So what kind of people would be held here? The usual variety of rapists, murderers, and so on. That sounds pretty violent. So here we are at the back of A Block. One of the legends that we hear, there was a recruit class training here. Two of them woke up one night and very distinctly seen a figure dressed in old military clothing standing by the fireplace in here. A little bit later in the night, one of them said he saw this old dressed soldier reaching his hand out towards somebody that was sleeping in the bunk. Now, why is this building and the one beside it such a bad state of repair? In 1985, the Irish government took a decision to use the fortress as a prison, and it probably was never suitable to accommodate prisoners. And not long after they arrived here, they rioted and destroyed the building, and they did it to both of these blocks. OK, where to next, Michael? Follow me. So here we are in the middle of the old cell block, and more specifically in John Mitchell's cell. John Mitchell was probably the most famous detainee here. He was an Irish patriot who was incarcerated here in 1848. So can you explain what John Mitchell was doing to be put in here? Yes, um, himself and his colleagues in a group called the Young Irelanders uh, had been campaigning uh, for independence for Ireland. He wrote in his newspaper that the only way Ireland would ever achieve independence was by way of armed insurrection and for that he was sentenced to 14 years we were coming around the back of Mitchell's cell and the guy I was with um, said what's that it looked like something was moving but it was off the ground it was a white mist and then it was gone Now, fellas, this is Mitchell Hall here. At the time the military were here, there was a social function hall. One individual, or a pair of them, who were sent to work here at one stage to refurbish the floor that we're standing on, they constantly heard footsteps or doors opening and closing and that sort of movement around the place. Mm -hmm. Now, was there any sort of rhythm or anything to the footsteps? I mean, was it like a march? Yeah, they were like the solid, uh, repetitive march. Now, I just need you to be careful here, guys. There's a, just over a 30 foot of a drop just behind us here, so it's quite dangerous and be conscious of it. Nice. Uh, now, this is an area where some people say they heard the Banshee, not too far from here. The Banshee is its spirit. Banshee makes herself known by keening or crying. And usually after hearing the crying, there will be a death. We just concluded our tour of Spike Island. It's a remarkable place, but there is a lot of elements to this particular island that is very dangerous physically to us investigating. Some of the buildings are in a very bad, dangerous state of repair. Some of the investigators could hurt themselves very severely. Just move this slightly to the right, please. That looks good. I like it. What are we looking at? Here we have the old cell block where the mist has been seen near John Mitchell's cell as well as that camera outside of the entire block. 
Then what we have is here's the moat, where this banshee has been reported to be seen. As well as the fact we have a prisoner cell block A, where this soldier was seen. We're done, we're ready to rock. On that note, let's get the lights out. This is Mitchell Hall. The claims in here are that they hear what sounds like footsteps and, and something that sounds like marching. Mm -hmm. Joan and I were investigating Mitchell Hall on Spike Island, and what we did is we tried to entice whatever was there to come speak with us. People say that they hear what sounds like people marching. Would you let us hear you walk around? Please come forward and let us know why you feel the need to march around. Is there something you feel that's not complete? Oh, I'm hearing sounds all over the place. You hear that? That sounds like footsteps. We're gonna stand still, so if you are walking around, could you let us hear you? Are you the one responsible for the place being haunted? If you are, let us know. What happened? I thought I felt something touch my wrist. Are you the one responsible for the place being haunted? I thought I felt something touch my wrist. Joe thought he felt you. I see something black. Did you just see that then in the door? Yeah, I wasn't sure. To me, oh my God, tell me if this is the same thing. Okay. The silhouette of a person walked into the light and then just came back. I, I got chills just as you were saying that. because that what, what you saw? That's what it looked like Holy to me. Shit, that freaked me out. It looked like a person. Yeah. You want to go see if something's over there? Whoa. I thought I saw it again in front of me. I didn't see it that time. Encroaching on the door, a shadow appeared, and it almost seemed like a silhouette of a person stepping out uh, from the shadows and retracting back into it. That's the light coming from there. I was wondering if there's a tree or something that might get in the way. I mean, I don't see any trees or anything else that might obstruct the light. What the hell? Did we just see you? Are you in this room? Are you hiding from us? We need you to come forward right now. I think if we head down this road, down into the village, that might work. Chris and I wanted to examine the areas outside the fortress. There were reports of the Banshee. It's never a good thing to try and call the Banshee forward. It's always something you try and stay away from. Uh, but uh, some friends of mine were able to make this concoction of incense, which was said to attract the Banshee. Right. Oh, that reek. A particular smell is said to attract her. If the spirit of the Banshee is here with us, please make yourself known. We aren't here to hurt you. Please come towards the incense we lit for you. I heard something. Not seeing anything on the thermal. Okay. Let's move on to the drill house. Chris and I then moved into the drill shed with a white apparition scene. Conduct an EVP session while we were in there. Hello. Please step forward to us. If there's somebody here, please don't be afraid to step forward. What? 
sound, like a hissing sound. I heard something. During that EVP session, there was strange noises to, uh, that seemed to happen over the rear left-hand side of the building. There's that noise again. Hello? Can the white lady who's been seen here make herself present? What did it sound like to you? You had said something, and then something raspy came after it. Are you in need of any assistance? Are you English? Are you Irish? Can you tell us your name? So there is an apparition that has been seen in this walkway. No, it's actually a mist. However, according to claim, it's very definitely not something natural. So prisoners would sleep on these wooden beds. Yeah. People believe that this white mist is really the spirit of John Mitchell. I did have the EMF detector on me, as well as the DV camera, and Paul brought his photo camera and was taking some long exposure photos to see if maybe we can capture this mist that people have seen. I'm positioned myself so that I'm out looking directly outside the cell. Is there anybody in here with us tonight? My name is Susan, and I'm here with my friend Paul. Mr. John Mitchell, if you are indeed here with us, then can you just give us a sign that you understand what I'm saying? Mr. John Mitchell, please feel free to come forward. Give us a sign that you are here. We were addressing uh, John Mitchell to come forward. We were running a number of different tools, and, and hopefully uh, we actually caused something. OK, folks, let's get our equipment packed up, get ready to go. We just finished the investigation at Spike Island. I'm actually really looking forward to seeing what might come out of the analysis, because a lot of the claims here were visual. If you're lucky enough to be there at the right time, you catch it. Then again, when you might leave an investigation feeling like you didn't have anything happen, there could have been things going on around you the entire time and you just didn't know about it. Spike Island, an interesting location. It has some very strange history going on. And I'm hoping that the history is actually going to bleed through into the data that we're going to be searching for and maybe come up with some answers as to what's really going on there. I do have some audio stuff that you should listen to. This mm -hmm. is Barry and Chris, and they're using the parabolic mic. And it seemed to capture a strange voice. Take a listen and see what you guys think. OK. okay. That's weird. I hear something that could sound like multiple voices to me. Yes, I agree. It's exactly what it sounds like to me. Yeah, very similar to what I thought. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I wasn't able to distinguish whether it's male or female. To me, it sounds like a female. OK, folks, how is the analysis going for Spike Island? Actually, we have a number of things we'd uh, like to show you and for you to listen to. Well, I'd like to show you something on the DVR. Mm -hmm. This actually happening in the uh, A block. What? I'm not sure what it is. Michael, how are you? It's good to see you again. Very good, very nice to see you again. Going through the process of the investigation, I know that uh, Joe and Scott had an unusual experience in the Mitchell building. Both of them witnessed this unusual shadow just move. It caught them completely off guard, I have to say. Yeah. And they weren't expecting it just through the door. And in fact, Joe had also reported that in the same building that he heard this voice, but it was so fast they weren't able to get it. Wow. So it was something, of course, we wanted yeah. to share with you today. It's so interesting because um, the reports we had there were from a couple of guys that were working there for six weeks. Mm -hmm. And they repeatedly heard these movements and noises. Mm -hmm. So I'm dying to see. <laughs> this piece of evidence that we want to bring forward to you is caught as Chris and I explored along the shoreline. We started to, to head toward the direction of the drill shed. We wanted to let you hear this and see what you could make of it. Yeah, yeah, okay. 
Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> that's weird. That sounds to me like a female voice whispering, come in. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, that's Almost welcoming, you know. Mm -hmm. It's, it's amazing. Paul and Susan are actually over at the old cell block, and um, they were doing some EVP work around Mitchell's cell. And they also got something on their audio that we want you to listen to and uh, see what you think. Okay. Can I hear it again? You can. <laughs> There is a, a sort of a, a musical mm -hmm. uh, signature to, to it, you know? That was in the block. That was in the block, yes. Uh -huh. But uh, Susan and Paul were continuing to work in a block in this room where this apparition was seen, yeah. trying to wake someone. We'll let you hear it and see what you think yourself. Good morning, baby. Good morning. Sometimes I think it's come here or come in. But definitely not the soft, gentle voice of the no. of the one down below. Well, staying in A Block, Michael, we wanted to bring you some video footage that was captured on our yeah. DVR system. This, of course, is shooting into the A Block. What we see here is this flash of light that appears just around the fireplace where this image of the guy is seen. What we see is collapses of energy fields. Cameras are able to catch these things as they close down. Was it the one that just appeared? That's, that's, the, that's right. I'll just run it one more time for you. Those can be pretty rare, I have to say. We have seen them yeah. in, in a few locations uh, around the world. And is this the fireplace? That's correct, yeah. Well, that's exactly where the apparition was supposed to mm -hmm. be seen. Wow. There was something that we've seen on our DVR system also recorded in the A block. We'll let you have a look at it and see what you think yourself. The boxes are focusing in on movement. But it's those streets that are appearing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There is something moving. It's moving relatively fast. Mm -hmm. There obviously is more than one. And it only happens twice over yeah. the eight hours. Yeah. So it's all happening in A block, really, isn't it? There seems to be quite a bit of activity in A block. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we do believe that, that Spike Island does have spirits. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. We do believe that the island is haunted. As an historian, you know, until you see something like this, they're just stories. This is the evidence that's being shown. Mm -hmm. And thank you very much for coming. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, you so lovely to meet you both. Well, I'm amazed at the revelations that were given to me by Barry and Chris. To see this evidence from the cameras and from the equipment is truly amazing. And I'm amazed at the number of items that emerged in different parts of the island. So it's incredible. Chris, I was very, very happy with that case. Um, Spike Island will live long in my memory, and I know that Michael was very impressed with what we were able to give him. It was just so much fun watching his reaction because he deals with facts all day long. So it was neat to see how strongly he reacted, especially to the EVP that we caught down by the waterfront. Yeah, and you know, it's a fantastic place. Wonderful history, wonderful people.